To talk more about what's behind the slump in ratings for the mainstream network, Sam Cedar, host of the Majority Report, joins us now. Sam, welcome. So, uh, Thank you, Liz. Pleasure. First, I want to talk about this survey that just came out. It shows that viewers that watch Fox are less informed than people that don't watch any news at all. But Fox is so profitable, so what's going on? Uh, well, there are, there's a group of uh, Americans, uh, maybe two million, three million a day, who are really interested in living a, a delusion in some respects. I mean, it's pretty stunning where watching the news makes you less informed. That's pretty shocking, but I think uh, these people are listening to what they want to hear. Uh, and I think that's indicative of, uh, of a bigger problem that we have with, with network news in general. And um, what, what is that problem? Do you think that it has to do with the fact that media is now more driven by business than by journalism? I mean, I think that's always been a problem to some extent. But I'll tell you what the real problem, uh, I, I think, at the end of the day is, is that, I mean, you have these uh, movements, you have the Occupy movement, uh, even to a certain extent uh, 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 without, uh, outside the Occupy movement, there are other populist movements that have a real problem with money and politics. Well, uh, just this week, uh, the FCC was sued by the major networks uh, because the FCC is now going to require major networks to post online. These are records they already have to keep. Post online how much political advertising, where their revenue comes from in terms of political ads. And so, I mean, just contemplate this for a moment. The, the networks, don't, there's no cost to them involved in this. Of course, they're already keeping the records, except for they're in uh, some file cabinet down at their, uh, at their headquarters. They don't want it online because if they were to show the American public, if the American public had access, easy access to these figures, they would realize that all of these hundreds of millions of dollars, these billions of dollars that are going to be spent on these elections coming up uh, in November, the vast majority of that money actually ends up in the, in the coffers of uh, broadcasting networks. And so how can you rely on them to report the, the, the primary story that we have in this country of wealth inequality and of, of money being corrupted by politics when, in fact, they're the largest beneficiaries of it? So, Sam, would you say in some instances that um, the media could be doing a disservice to the public? Well, of course, because, you know, when, when, when your average viewer uh, dips into whether it's cable news or even network news, they assume that the network doesn't have these uh, other ulterior agendas. Uh, they assume that they're getting the most important news of the day. And so as it becomes dumbed down, as certain issues become taboo, um, the, the, the viewer just becomes, frankly, uh, stupider and uh, less, uh, less knowledgeable about the real important uh, issues that are affecting their lives on a daily basis. But they're not capable of making that connection because the networks and the, the cable outlets leave a huge portion of that out. And beyond Fox, um, CNN is also particularly has had a pretty bad month, and they are the pioneer of this 24-hour network model, and they are suffering the most. What do you think is behind that? Well, I mean, I think if you look at this network news, I mean, here it really becomes uh, an element of laziness and, and groupthink. Uh, you know, the producers at all of these uh, cable networks, uh, to a large extent, and some obviously... Uh, and not so much, but they, they're chasing each other. And so the, the stories become stale. Uh, they don't really dig at things. Um, the, the, the yardsticks by which they're measured are really just their, own, their, their competitors. But across the board, CNN's not the only one that's down. All of the cable news, uh, to a certain extent, is, is down. And, and part of it, I think, is because on some level, the audiences are realizing that none of this is, is terribly relevant to them. Uh, you've got uh, two major party candidates who are, are backed by, in many respects, the same money and the same interests. And I think the audience is, is, is turning off uh, the, those networks that are just basically telling them um, uh, that there's something uh, that's going to affect your lives here when, when I think people are, are getting more and more a sense that this very well may not affect my life. 
And um, Sam, it's not just TV. Um, it looks like newspapers are in trouble as well. Many newspapers are going down under, and the latest victim is in New Orleans. Today, the New Orleans, you see it there, the New, the New Orleans Times pick announced that they will end its daily publication. And this paper has been around for 175 years. And now New Orleans will be the biggest city in the U.S. without a daily paper. So um, it's not just TV. It's newspapers as well. Well, I mean, I think, you know, uh, it, it's the, the reason why newspapers are suffering, and particularly locally owned uh, newspapers are suffering, I think has more to do with technology, frankly, uh, than, it, than it does with a sense that uh, they don't have the, the, the readership uh, or the interest in, in the local news. I mean, I think, you know, uh, simultaneous to, uh, to all that's happening from a political standpoint is this technological revolution. And people are, are, are getting their news in different ways, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, podcasting or whether it's uh, reading blogs online or uh, other forms of media. And I think, you know, newspapers that didn't see this coming and that didn't have the, the, the capital to, to make these changes quick enough, I think, are, are falling by the wayside. And I think when it comes to local papers, uh, that's a huge loss for, uh, for, you know, citizens, frankly. And certainly they're seeing that over in New Orleans today. Sam, do you think this signifies a shift in where people are turning to for the news these days? Well, I, I think to a certain extent, I mean, you know, you can look across the board, uh, uh, outlets like yours, uh, numbers are up, and um, on YouTube, and uh, in uh, podcasts, and alternate forms of media, uh, blogs now, uh, and we're starting to see actually advertising head to those type of uh, outlets, because I think that's where, where people are going. And, you know, there's, uh, people do it, I think, uh, in those outlets for different reasons within the, the corporate um, uh, media empire, uh, because, you know, you don't, you don't really have the same uh, incentive structure there. And so I think the, the quality of the work is, is different, and sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, but I think the, the agendas behind the work are more explicit, and uh, and I think people can find what they're looking for uh, without this sense of uh, there. There's another stakeholder that is sitting down on the couch next to me as I watch this. Except for I just don't know who that stakeholder is. And um, perhaps people are realizing this, and and that's why um, it, it is such a bad time now for the networks. Um, Sam, what do you think they need to change in order to reverse the trend that that we're seeing right now? Wow. Um, I mean, to the extent that they're capable of, tra of changing, I mean, look, you know, there, there's an inherent uh, a problem when you, you, you have uh, the, notion, uh, the National Association of Broadcasters and all that they represent are uh, attempting to, to hide the fact that they are one of the, the, the biggest beneficiaries of the enormous amount of money that's flooding our politics. I mean, that is such a central problem that we have in this country. Um, I don't know how you overcome that. I mean, I think they can perhaps make their news uh, more relevant in some respects, and I think they can, um, they can uh, attempt to incentivize the people who work for them to, to find stories that aren't being covered elsewhere. But meanwhile, you know, they're driven by the same corporate concerns. That is, we have to cut expenses and uh, increase uh, profits, and, and the only way they can cut the expenses is by, by cutting down on the one thing that they offer as opposed to, you know, an outlet like mine, which is uh, they had international reporting and they had reporters in uh, every state in the country. And, and now those are the first things that go. So um, at the end of the day, are you going to listen to an opinion network that you know is owned by a weapons manufacturer or uh, is owned by a big player uh, who is fighting net neutrality? Uh, or one that is, uh, it, it has other political um, uh, agendas that are not explicit? Or are you going to listen to a smaller outlet that can deliver a just as well-reasoned opinion, but at the end of the day, you know that that person is expressing an opinion that has nothing to do with having to uh, kowtow to their corporate overlords. And so I, I'm not sure there is much they can do. All right, Sam, interesting. And thank you very much for coming on the show. That was Sam Cedar, host of The Majority Report.